Hello friends, welcome to Easy Medic. Today we will be discussing about hernia and about the inguinal hernia in detail. Hernia is the abnormal protrusion of part of viscous through an opening. This opening can either be normal or abnormal. Hernia has a sac and it enters into a cavity. Now let us see the different types of hernias. Herniation of the brain tissue and meninges can occur. This is uncommon and the most common cause of this to occur is doing a lumbar puncture for CSF extraction during raised intracranial pressure and that is an absolute contraindication. Let us move on to the more common ones such as the epigastric hernia, para-umbilical hernia, umbilical hernia and in the inguinal region, inguinal hernia and femoral hernia. A more systematic classification is the hernias in anterior abdominal wall, posterior abdominal wall, groin and the pelvic region. In anterior abdominal wall, as we have already seen, umbilical Paraumbilical, epigastric, and spigalian. The spigalian hernia occurs along the semilunar line. In the posterior abdominal wall, they can be superior or inferior lumbar hernia. The groin region, inguinal or femoral hernia can occur. The inguinal hernia can further be divided into direct and indirect hernias. The pelvic region has obturator, sciatic or gluteal hernias. Now let us discuss about the most common hernia which is the inguinal hernia. And in order to discuss about that we must first know the anatomy of the inguinal canal. The inguinal canal is formed anteriorly or superiorly by the aponeurosis of external oblique and internal oblique posteriorly or the deeper aspect is formed by the conjoint tendon and the facial transversalis. The roof is formed by transverse abdominis muscle along with internal oblique. The floor is formed by inguinal ligament which extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. Now since this is a canal, there must be two openings and those two openings are called the deep ring on the internal aspect and superficial ring on the external aspect respectively. Since the deep ring is present in the internal aspect, it is due to the deficiency of fascia transversalis. That is the deep ring is formed anatomically due to the deficiency in fascia transversalis and the superficial ring is formed due to an opening in the external oblique aponeurosis. The deep ring is present at 1.25 cm about the mid inguinal point that is when you draw a line from anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle and mark the midpoint and 1.25 cm above that midpoint is uh, the anatomical position of deep ring. The superficial ring is 1.25 cm above and lateral to the pubic tubercle. These locations are important to find out which type of hernia has occurred whether it is direct or indirect that will be discussed later now let us move on to the causes of hernia any cause can be classified into primary and secondary cause primary is when the hernia occurs unprecedented and secondary is because of some other factor which is causing the hernia most common primary factor is the congenital weakness of the abdominal wall and uh, the secondary causes are due to raised intra-abdominal pressure. Now the raised intra-abdominal pressure can be due to prolonged or chronic cough, constipation, repeated pregnancy, habitual weight lifters and so on. Even obesity is a cause. In direct hernia, the hernial sac enters the inguinal canal directly through the posterior inguinal wall without passing through the deep inguinal ring and uh, since it's not passing through the deep inguinal ring the neck of the hernia is wider 
and therefore it will reduce easily and more commonly by itself and uh, the bubbles do not get uh, strangulated in this kind of hernia very easily and therefore the complications are less common than the indirect hernia and uh, this kind of particular kind of hernia is occurring due to weakness of the abdominal wall and therefore it is usually bilateral and uh, this hernial swelling occurs medial to the inferior epigastric artery and therefore it comes inside the Hasselbach triangle. Now the Hasselbach triangle is formed by the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle medially in inferior epigastric artery on the lateral side and the inguinal ligament on the inferior side. This is the Hasselbach triangle and the direct hernia comes inside the Hasselbach triangle. In contrast, the indirect hernia is called so because it takes a longer path and it is coming indirectly into the inguinal canal by passing through the deep ring followed by the superficial ring. Since it is passing through the ring, the neck of the hernia is uh, smaller or narrow and therefore it cannot reduce easily. Uh, the complications are more common and the bubble can get strangulated inside this hernia more commonly. And uh, this particular type of hernia is more common unilaterally that is in the right side because the main uh, function of the inguinal canal in the embryonic and the fetal life is descent of the testis and uh, the right this testis descends later than the left one and therefore uh, inguinal hernia that is the indirect one is more common on the right side and the uh, indirect hernia is lateral to the inferior epigastric artery it is lateral to this and therefore it does not come inside the Hasselbach triangle we will discuss the clinical features and how to differentiate uh, direct and indirect hernia in the next video stay tuned